Hi, and welcome to today's Artifact Introduction. I'm Jason Mazzala, Senior Manager of Restoration Maintenance here at Flying Heritage and Combat Armor Museum. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to our Messerschmitt BF 109E3. So the Messerschmitt 109 was designed in 1935 by Willie Messerschmitt and was in service long before the start of World War II. It in fact participated in the Spanish Civil War. During World War II, however, it was extremely successful. All of Germany's top three aces flew ME 109s or BF 109s, I should say. So interesting point, what's the difference between an ME-109 and a BF-109? Well, BF-109 is the actual official designation for the airplane, and that's become it because it was um, the plans were initially submitted by Bavarian Aircraft Factory, and so therefore it had the designation BF. The ACES and all of the allied Forces and pilots called it the ME-109 as kind of a layman's term because everybody knew that it was Willie Messerschmitt that designed the airplane. The BF-109 served through the entire war and was very successful. This particular BF-109 participated in the Battle of Britain. It was piloted by veteran pilot Edward Hemmerling and in July of 1940 was part of a, a massive mission that took place near Dover, England, and it was uh, involved in a, a huge scale dogfight. The airplane was shot and injured and limped back home. However, it never made it. It wasn't until 48 years later, after a severe storm that on a beach in France, the wing of this very airplane washed up on shore and was discovered. The airplane was then recovered and restored to flying condition by well-known Craig Charleston in the UK. Let's go have a look at the airplane. As you can see, the scale of the airplane is relatively small, and you probably noticed when I was back by the tail that it looked really small compared to an average-sized guy, and, and that's correct. The airplane is really small. You can see the cockpit and the entryway is, is not very large. It's pretty cramped quarters inside there. Everything was really compact, but it was a good design. The wing flap construction you can see is fabric. All the service controls, in fact, are fabric, and that made the airplane even lighter. Although you think of a fighter as being fast and nimble, this airplane had special attention given to it when it was designed for its slow flight characteristics as, as well. So one of the things that, there are, there are two major things I should say, uh, that improved its slow flight capabilities. And the first of those two things are what's called aileron droop. So what that means is that the ailerons, which normally sit even with the wingtip here, and, and typically there's only a small bit of aileron droop for aerodynamic purposes, but the more droop that you have in an airplane, the better slow flight capabilities it has. So what Willie Messerschmitt designed was every time you put the wing flaps down, like when you're coming in for landing or, or want to do slow flight, the ailerons also droop simultaneously. So as you can see, we have the flaps in the full down position here, and this aileron is sitting, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good inch and a half uh, below the wingtip there. And that happens simultaneously on both sides, of course. And so aileron droop is, is something that's very interesting and, and uh, not ahead of its time, but to put it on a fighter was, was really smart. And it, it really uh, helped the airplane handle better at slower flight. Additionally, if we walk around to the front of the wing, and the, the Germans really kind of perfected this, it has wing slats, and they're just controlled by angle of attack. You know, the airplane gets slow and the angle of attack changes uh, of air over the wing, and, and then these slats, they just automatically come out or retract, depending on the airspeed and, and the angle of attack, of course. Uh, here's the, uh, the pitot tube that hangs down uh, well below the left wing there. 
And then we walk inboard and we see uh, one of five guns that the BF 109E3 would carry. This is one of three 20 millimeter cannons. They had one in each wing. So there's one in this left wing, one in the right wing. And additionally, they had one that came right out the front of the nose, right through the propeller and would shoot right out the front of the nose. So three 20, 20 millimeter cannons. In addition to that, it also had two MG-17 machine guns that rested inside the engine cowling and you can kind of see the cutout up there and they fired through the propeller uh, using synchronizers uh, to ensure that the bullets wouldn't hit the propeller. As we come around to the other side of the engine, you can see the exhaust stacks are here and they sit a little bit low. And so that brings us to the power plant. The BF 109E3 had an 1100 horsepower Daimler Benz DB601, which was an inverted V12 engine. And that's why the exhaust stack sits so low. And a lot of the American fighters that have the, the Merlin Rolls Royce engine or, or the Allison engine, the exhaust stacks are going to sit a lot higher. Well, this engine's a V12 but it's inverted, which means that the cylinders are all on the bottom side, therefore putting the exhaust stacks this far down. If we look underneath, we can see one of two radiators. It's uh, as it's a V12, it's a, a liquid cooled engine, which means that it has a radiator just like your car does and uses coolant a lot like your car does as well. And so it had a radiator, one on each side. Uh, you can see the, the door on the back side of the radiator, that would be an air exit door. And so the pilot has a, a, a handle, a crank inside the cockpit uh, where he can control both doors, both coolant doors. And uh, the more air it lets out, the cooler that the, uh, the coolant gets and the cooler the engine gets. And then the less air he lets out, you know, less airflow through the radiator than uh, the warmer the engine gets. And just depending on what the climate was and altitude and, and uh, what they needed, uh, determined where they set the door. Obviously it's gonna be a lot different when you're flying off a, a desert field in North Africa, as opposed to, uh, you know, being at the top of Norway in, in the middle of winter. So again, you can see we've got our wing slats here. Uh, you almost can't see them unless you pull them out. It's uh, really a well-built airplane. As we come on back here to the tail, uh, again, you're gonna notice that it's just really small. Uh, something that was unique to the early model uh, 109s is the, the strut, the brace on the bottom, you can see that supports the tail. The later models had a, had a larger tail. Um, a larger tail wheel, everything was just a lot beefier back here. So the E model was, was kind of the last of the smaller light versions of the BF-109. And uh, we'll just have a look, a look here at the, the elevators, which are fabric, and the tabs. Um, a lot of, uh, uh, typically speaking, a lot of the German aircraft had fixed tabs and uh, they didn't want you to, to adjust them. They would adjust these at the factory during test flights and then instruct the ground crew not to adjust them. So the airplane would be in trim and flying well when they delivered it to the, uh, to the Luftwaffe unit that it was going to serve in. A lot of, uh, you know, the other airplanes uh, like from the United States all have adjustable trim tabs so that the pilot can manipulate it in flight. Um, but they, they didn't, didn't need that system. They wanted to keep everything kind of light and simple. And lastly, you have the rudder with a very similar, very similar tab setup. 